believe we had a merry, merry, merry Christmas. Hallelujah. We celebrated well. And we bless God. God has been good. Praise the name of Jesus. He has been good. I don't know about you, but to me, he has been very, very good. He has been faithful. I woke up this morning and I started thinking, we have only four more days to the end of 2020. Four more days. But when we got to March, the first of March, we were wondering, will December ever reach? Will 2020 ever come to an end? When we were told, stay home. When we were told, you have to keep your distances. And we were made to do things that we are not used to doing. I don't know about you, but I wondered, will we ever come to the end of this year? And I remember someone was making fun. And he said that this is the way to describe the months of 2020. You start with January, February, COVID-19, BBI, <laughs> and locusts. Then you end 2020. But you know, I can't count it like that. For me, it has been January, February, the goodness of God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. And now we are coming to the end of the year. Hallelujah. I want to take this opportunity to thank God so, so much for our parents in the house, our bishop and our mom. God bless you so much. Amen. Amen. One, for giving me this chance. Two, for providing exemplary leadership in this season. Leaders are tried during crisis. But you know what? I've been looking carefully at our bishop. Maybe he doesn't know this. I've been looking carefully at mom. And I can tell you for a fact that it has been sweet and easy walking into their footsteps. Because I know that the places they have stepped in are not going to sink under. So they have given us leadership during this time. A time when nobody would want to be a leader. At times, there's a time I was looking at uh, our president, Uhuru Kenyatta, and I felt pity for him. There were locusts. Then there is COVID. And I kept wondering, he has to keep addressing the nation. Where does he get the energy? Where does he get the strength? Where does he get the words? And you know, for a moment, I remember telling a few people, can we forget about politics for a moment? and pray for this man. Because he needed a lot of wisdom. He needed a lot of energy. And for this church, we have found that wisdom in our bishop. We have found that wisdom in our mother. And that's the reason we can come to church. That's the reason this church has not been closed. Because if it was not for their wisdom, maybe kungekuwa kumefungwa leo. Hallelujah. And so today I woke up and I was just recounting of the blessings of the Lord. That God has been faithful, faithful. And actually for the past one to two weeks, my heart has been giving God praise. Thanking God for the things that he has done. Thanking God for every small thing that at times we take for granted. That when you are given a chance to give thanks to God, <laughs> at times uh, we lack words. We pray for, or rather we thank God for five minutes and then it is finished. But when we are going to God with a whole list of prayer requests, then we can pray for hours without end. Thanksgiving, at times we don't have anything to thank God for. And just um, as the, you know, uh, I have maybe, I normally call it a weakness. That when something appears in the scene, the first thing I get to do is to Google and find out what this is. You know, research and find out what this is. Where did it come from? And I remember one of my colleagues normally says, your problem is you Google too much. One as if you, <laughs> you Google too much. And in the process of Googling, I came to discover that when you have COVID-19, you lose your smell. You lose your taste. And I thought... What does it feel like to lose smell? 
in Amanisha, I can get food that has gone bad, and I won't even notice. I'll eat it. And immediately, I started appreciating God for the sense of smell. I started appreciating God that I can taste food, know how sweet or delicious it is. I started thanking God that I can walk out without being told stay indoors. You know, just walking with your feet, not driving, just walking. And so we have every reason to bless God today, even as we are remaining with only four more days to go, to come to the end of 2021. Yesterday, I saw a meme, and it was a weird meme. It said um, that what 2021 will become <laughs> will be determined with what the Chinese are eating during this Christmas. <laughs> and I thought, he ni kuwanea hawa watu, sana, sana, sana. You know, it looked like a joke, but ni kuwanea tu sana. But I said 2021 will be determined by the goodness of Jehovah. Hallelujah. I'd like us to read a scripture now that we are in the festive season. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. A scripture that most of the time we open during this season. Most of the time we go back to it during this season. And this is what the Bible says. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this bonus if you will. Hallelujah. And to us, a child is born. This was a prophecy that was given by Isaiah just before Israel went into captivity in Babylon. And Isaiah stood and said, and to us, a child is born. He spoke as if it had already happened. He was a man of faith, yet he was speaking about something that was to happen in the, in the future. And we want to bless God that as we are seated here this morning, we are living in that future of Isaiah. A child was born. And on Friday, we were celebrating his birthday. But many of us just end at the point where the child has been born. We celebrate. We get gifts. We open the gifts like we opened them yesterday for those who were able to receive boxes. And we slaughter chicken, we slaughter goats, and we slaughter cows. And we are celebrating the birth of a child. But it goes beyond that. It was not only a child. The child who was born was to just indicate that he came in human form. But it goes beyond him coming in human form. A son was given. From heaven, it was not just a child who was born. In the heavenlies, there was a son who had been released from glory for you and I. A son was given. From heaven point of view, a very precious gift was released. God's one and only son was released to come to earth. And it was not just released like any other child who was born, like many children were born on 25th of this, um, this particular year. I want to believe there were children who were born. But he was a son who was given so that a few things would change in your life and in my life. And the scripture I'd like us to look at very critically today is that the government shall be upon his shoulders. One as if you will. The government shall be upon his shoulders. And I kept thinking the entire of this week, what does it mean for the government to be upon his shoulders? Government is rulership. Government 
is dominion. And many times when we talk about government, what comes into our mind is the government of Kenya because we are Kenyans. And we are most of the time more likely to think of what happens in the government of Kenya. There are so many, so many things that are not good in the government of Kenya. Corruption, for instance, is found in the government of Kenya. And many times when you talk about government in Kiswahili, we translate it sirikali. From my place, we call it sirkal. Yes, Sirkal. And Sirkal is normally an entity that is thought of by certain people to offer help where help is required. Where there is flood, we call Sirkal to come and help. Where there is famine, Sirkali Ingilia Kati. And now the Bible is telling us that the government shall be upon his shoulders. Whose shoulders? Upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ. In other words, dominion and rulership will be upon his shoulders. He is not just the child who was cuddled by Mary. He is not just a child who was, uh, who was uh, maybe gifted by the shepherds and the wise men. He is now going to grow into a son strong enough to have shoulders that can be able to carry dominion, shoulders that can be able to carry rulership. And that's our King Jesus Christ. And when I looked at that, I couldn't help but remember the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 where the Bible says after God created man, he told them to go and have dominion. He told them to go and subdue. He told them to be fruitful. He told them to multiply. And that was the mandate of man. That was the mandate that you were given. That was the mandate that I was given. But something happened in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 when the serpent came in cunningly after a lot of rehearsal, I believe. He had rehearsed a lot of what words he was coming to speak to Eve, and he knew what particular time Eve would be separated or would be alone away from the husband. And so, serpent comes. And when he comes along, he cunningly takes over the authority that was given to man. He cunningly takes over that rulership, that dominion that you and I should have had, that you and I were given from the beginning of time. And he walks away with it. And as he walks away, Adam and Eve are thrown out of the Garden of Eden. When they are powerless, they are authorityless, they don't have anything. And immediately the enemy brings in a, a, a lot of evil into the world and man cannot do anything to stop it. And so God looks down and realizes for me to be able to take back this authority to man I must give my son. And that's why the Bible says a son has been given. So he decides to release his son from the heavenlies, to release his son from glory so that this son can come back on earth and restore the order that was there from the beginning of time. Remember, we are still in the year of restoration and demonstration. And so Jesus comes and the Bible says that the government shall be upon his shoulders. He comes and he conquers the enemy and the government is restored back on his shoulders. And in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 onwards, the Bible says that all power in heaven and earth has now been given, has now been restored back to Jesus Christ. In other words, he has taken back that authority that the enemy had cunningly taken over from us and now he has it and and because he has it, because you and I have believed in him and he lives within us, now we have that authority and rulership. Praise the name of the Lord. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Rulership and dominion is resting upon his shoulders. And because it's resting upon his shoulders, and now he is our master, he is our king of kings, then it means we can again start practicing that very authority that was given to us from the beginning of time. We are no longer hopeless people. We are no longer helpless people because we have a king of kings who has all power, who has all dominion, and he lives within us. He lives within you, and he lives within me. He has restored that authority back to us. By virtue of him having been born on the 25th, 
And most of the people say it was not exactly 25th. But many times I say I don't care when it was. All I know is that Jesus was born someday. One as if he It might not have been in December. I don't know. But he was born and he lived on earth and he died for you and I. People might not remember the dates. Just like when you go to your grandmother in the village and you ask them when was your birthday, they'll tell you the day the locusts were here. So you're wondering which day was this when the locusts were there. Or they might describe it by saying the time of the famine that was called this. So one thing I care to know is that Jesus was born. And I care to know that now, because he was born and because he was given from the heavenlies, now that the Bible says that, uh, that the government shall be upon his shoulders, then what that means to me is that I'm no longer hopeless. I am no longer helpless. I have a king of kings. I have power and authority that has been restored back to me. I can use it to stop evil wherever it is. Hallelujah. What does this mean to us? What does this mean to us? As it goes on, the Bible says, for he shall be called wonderful. We are not only told that the government shall be upon his shoulders. We are not only told that a child has been born and a son has been given, but now he is being introduced to us afresh and we are being told he shall be called wonderful counselor. One has a few. Isaiah was very keen. He wanted us to know through the Spirit of God who this Messiah that is coming shall be called. What kind of identity will he have? He is called Wonderful Counselor. What does Wonderful Counselor mean? That is the first identity he is given. Wonderful Counselor. It means he has power, he has authority, he has dominion, but he is not a tyrant. He rules with love. He rules with mercy. Because if he was a tyrant, he would have come and found you and I in sin, and he would have destroyed us because that's what we deserved. But he comes with mercy. He comes with love. He is a king who is all-powerful, but yet very loving. He is a king who is almighty, but yet very merciful. And so he comes as a, a wonderful counselor. In him, there is no confusion because in him there is counsel. One has a few. He is a counselor. Many times when we don't know what to do in our areas of career, in our marriages, in our parenting, we look for counselors to help us. But the Bible calls him wonderful Counselor, meaning inside of him, there is no confusion. When you get him into your life, when you get enlisted into his kingdom, because he is king, he is the king of kings, then there is no confusion in your life. He has everything figured out. He has everything figured out. And when you read the Gospels, I discovered this one thing, that everybody or anyone who walked to Jesus having any particular problem, left his presence having been sorted out. Born as if you will. He spoke words that were full of wisdom. He spoke words that were full of counsel. We can look at John chapter 7 verse 46. He was a man who was full of counsel. John 7 46. The officers answered, no man ever spoke like this man. He spoke words that even the people of his time looked at him and wondered, where did he get such kind of knowledge? Where did he get such kind of wisdom? Because he is a wonderful counselor. They asked themselves, why or how is he speaking these words that he's speaking? You can look at Luke chapter 11 verse 27. Luke chapter 11 verse 27. And it happened as he spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts which nursed you. For a woman, a mother to say that, they have looked at this young man and realized he is blessed. 
He does not speak like any other young man in town. The words he's speaking are bringing life. And they are looking at him and wishing they were their parents. And so he's saying, blessed is the woman who gave you birth. Because of the words that he spoke. He is a wonderful counselor. Finally, in that particular wonderful counselor, we can look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 2 to 3. Jesus is full of wisdom. Wisdom that can sort every area of our lives. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2 to 3. He is full of wisdom. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, this was Jesus speaking. Uh -huh. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the, carp uh, the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Jesus had so much wisdom that when he spoke, people were wondering, is this not the brother of so-and-so? Of so -and -so? Is this not the son of, uh, of, of Joseph the carpenter and of Mary? And maybe they would mention the profession of Mary as he walked. And you know, as they mentioned that, his wisdom was so high up, so, so high, until people got offended. To them who don't believe, they get offended. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the wonderful counselor because he himself is God. And he is the source of truth. When he rules the earth, there will not be any uncertainty in his administration. When you allow him to rule your life, because we said government is rulership and dominion. And when you and I allow him to rule our hearts, there will not be uncertainty with our lives. Bona sefiwe. He is the ultimate and the only answer to our lives' confusion. When you allow him in your life, he will sort every issue that concerns your life. Every issue. Because he has answers to every problem in our lives. Is it marriage? He can sort you. Is it parenting? He can sort you. Is it career-wise? He can sort you. He can sort you in every area of your life. Can he sort our nation during this pandemic? Yes, he can. Can he sort the, uh, the body of Jesus Christ? Yes, he can. Because he is the wonderful counselor. Number two, he is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. Nothing can beat him. Because Christ is God, he can forgive sin. He can defeat Satan. He can liberate people from the power of evil. He can redeem people. He answers prayers and he can restore souls and reign as God. He is the mighty God. He took power and dominion from the enemy. He took power and dominion. He is mightier than any other power that you've ever thought existed in the world. He is mightier than all the superpowers that exist in the earth that we have. He is the mighty God. He can deliver us from the powers of darkness. He can heal us from sicknesses that the enemy throws at us. And the Bible can prove this for us. A woman comes who has been visiting doctors upon doctors for a period of 12 years. They have tried all the medicine of the time. Nothing is happening. But as soon as she touches the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ, she receives her healing. Mighty God. A blind man who had only heard about Jesus but not seen him because he did not have eyes. And he gets to hear that Jesus is passing by. Calls out on him with a loud voice. And as soon as he interacted with Jesus, he was able to see. He is the mighty God. If we only will allow ourselves to interact with Jesus, you can't interact with him as the son of God, as the one who's, uh, who, who uh, the government is upon his shoulders and remain the same. He changes lives. 
And so today, even as we are sitting in this place, we want to move from a place of just celebrating him like the chubby baby whom we like holding and feeling nice. I remember the time when we were in Sunday school. During Christmas, we'd be given some stuffed dolls and we'd hold them and we'd go like, oh, yes, you know? It comes to a point where you let go of that image of the small baby and start remembering him as the king of kings. Start looking at him as the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, the son of the living God, the ruler, the mighty God who is able to rescue you from all the pains that you have been going through. Because as long as you're still holding him as a child, you have not known who he is. No wonder a point comes when he is walking with the disciples. He has performed tremendous miracles with the disciples. I mean, among the, dis uh, the disciples. And it comes to a point when he looks at them and realizes, even though I have walked with these disciples, I guess they do not know who I am. Buona sifiwe. And so he stops at, uh, just at one moment and uh, starts asking them, who do people out there say that I am? They're like, some are saying you are so-and-so, some are saying this, some are saying the other. But he comes closer home and then he asks, okay, they are saying that about me, but who do you say that I am? And that's the question that we need to ask ourselves today. Who do we say Jesus, whom we celebrated, celebrated his birthday on Friday? Who do we say he is? Is he still the baby? For me, no. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the mighty God. So whatever I need, I can run to him and I know he will sort me. Number three, he is the everlasting father. Everlasting father. He has no end. He was, he is, and he is to come. He has no end. Everlasting. And in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 10 to 12, Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. So the Bible says, And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. And they will grow old like a garment. Like a clock, you will fold them up, and they'll be changed. But you are the same, and your ears will not fail. Hallelujah. He laid the foundations of the earth. He created you and I. And you know, all these things that he created are growing old. They are growing rusty, including you and I. I'm not the same age I was five years or ten years ago. I'm growing old. There are things that I used to do that I can't do now. Because I am growing old. But Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever. We cannot say that he has grown old such that the things he was doing 2,000 years ago, he cannot do them today. No. He is still the same. He saved, he still saves. He healed, he still heals. He delivered, he still delivers. He remains the same. Bona sifiwi. He does not grow old like the garments that we wear that after a short period they are torn. No. He is the everlasting father. And so you giving your life to him sorts a lot of things. You are secure in him. Hallelujah. When you give your life to one who never grows old, you are not afraid that someday they will not be able to walk. There's another time uh, we, I have um, a vision daughter. I took her to the encounter. And so her children <laughs> called me grandmother. And so one time, one of them called me grandmother. And my daughter was around a few years ago. And my daughter looked at me and then called me aside and told me, Mom, usikubali wakuite grandmother tena? So I asked why. Because grandmothers uh, normally have wh white hair and then they die. You know, that was her definition of a grandmother. You have white hair, and then you die. So if someone dares call your mother grandmother, it means you start developing white hair, and then you will die. But you know what? We have a God who cannot be called grandfather. 
Hallelujah. I call him father. My grandfather who was born again called him father. My daughter calls him father. When my children will have children, they will call him father. He never grows old. He is forever fresh. And we can trust him with our lives. Hallelujah. Finally, Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. What would we need in the world more than peace? He is the Prince of Peace. When all you're hearing is war on every side, he is the Prince of Peace. In the Messiah's kingdom, there are no conflicts because he is the Prince of Peace. In his kingdom, there are no parties that are fighting one as if you we don't have multipartism in his kingdom. At Takas Kumoja Tukwena opposition, leader of opposition in his kingdom. No, he is the prince of peace. In Romans chapter 1, verse 7, he offers peace from God. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So this Messiah, who is called the Prince of Peace, gives us peace from God according to that scripture. In Romans 5, 1, to all who receive his grace, he brings peace with God. To all who receive grace, if you have received grace, meaning you've also received salvation. He comes with peace in himself. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has reconciled us. Now we have peace with God. We who are not a people, we who are supposed to be headed for destruction, he comes and he gives us peace with God. To those who surrender to him in faith, he brings peace. Peace of God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. If you have surrendered to him in faith, he will bring peace, the peace of God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So if only you dare walk with him, he will give you peace from God. He will ensure he makes peace with God on your behalf. And you will receive the peace of God. And as I come to an end, during this festive season, during this festive season, because we are still celebrating until the 1st of January, during this season, if only we'll allow ourselves to have a revelation of Jesus as the wonderful counselor, of Jesus as the mighty God, of Jesus as the everlasting father, of Jesus as the prince of peace, and also come to a point of understanding what took place at the cross of Calvary. This will help us walk in authority and in the blessing that Jesus died for as we get into the year 2021. Knowing who Jesus is, having a revelation of who he is, not just coming to church and not just saying he is Lord because someone else said he is Lord, but you surrendering yourself, locking yourself in with him and telling him, Lord, reveal who you are to me. Let me understand you. Let me know you as a wonderful counselor. Let me know you as a mighty God. Let me know you as an everlasting father. Let me know you as a prince of peace who will give me peace. My mind is tormented during this time because we are being told that during the pandemic most people are going to be mentally ill and all we need is the prince of peace to, for us to be at peace with God for us to be at peace knowing that God is in charge you and I having that revelation will help us walk into 2021 whether corona will still be continuing or whether it will have stopped whether there will be another pandemic or not that will not be our problem because we will be living knowing that God is our source. We will be living knowing that we have the wonderful counselor in our lives and we can walk in authority at the end of the day. And so the government shall be upon his shoulders. And if the government is upon his shoulders and I have received him in my life, then the one who has the government is inside of me, is inside of you. Hallelujah. I'd like us to pray together. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us a son. We thank you that we have a wonderful counselor. We thank you that we have a mighty God. We thank you that our father is everlasting. We thank you that we have the prince of peace. And Lord, I want to bless your name because this revelation will help us walk in authority, not as helpless being, but in authority. Oh, won't you receive praise? Won't you receive glory and honor in this season? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.